connection for any future broadcasts with me all right so what I've done here I've done some cuttings this morning from my other vines on the other side they are beautiful and healthy and I'm just going to show you how to prune um, well I've already pruned them but how to cut the leaves and then what to do with them before you actually grow them all right so here's a few so this one it's about a meter long or this one might be just under a meter um, and here's some more so this one I actually left I wanted to show you this one um, you'll see that new vines will start growing the new leaf will grow from an existing leaf so you will see this part here this is the actual the original vine this one and then a new shoot started in the leaf of this original one and it grew this cutting all right so a lot of times when you're pruning the vines you if the if the original vine is still healthy and you actually want it to be producing flowers instead of um, uh, new new leaf growth then you would prune this right here and I'll do that for you now. So what we would do is you prune the, the, the new growth right there. Okay. And then you've got a cutting. But it's not finished yet. Right. So you've just pruned it from the original um, vine. Now what you do for a cutting is you see that's the the end of the vine and that's your new leaf growth so you actually tip this tip it off take it right off and then you've got that and then additionally you cut this is the top of the vine you'll see that the leaf will naturally drop this way so that's how you know that that's the top of your vine so what you do is you cut the top three leaves and you don't cut them all sorry all the way off to the base you cut them to about there so you've got about a I don't know maybe uh, an inch inch and a half of a leaf left and you do that with number one leaf number two and leaf number three All right, so I've done the top three leaves. Then you go to the bottom of your cutting and you do this, cut the bottom three leaves, but for the bottom, you actually cut them right to the base of the leaf. You cut it right off. So that's one, two, and three all right now this is actually a short cutting so it's got no leaves left on it other than the three top ones that we just sort of did a half cut with and that's okay that's fine it will still grow and then you leave that all right so i'm going to do another one and i'll show you what we will do after so here's another cutting so we're going to cut off the bottom three right off the leaves one two in actual fact I'm only going to do two on this one because it's actually got a quite a long uh, base anyway All right and then we're going to tip the new growth off and then cut the top three one not right off leave about an inch or so of the leaf there and there okay so 
I've done two to show you. Now you can't plant them straight away. You can't plant them straight away like this once you cut them. So what you need to do is, I'll get the one that I cut. You then turn them upside down and you have to let them dry. So you can hang them up with a piece of string um, or, or have them just holding, you know, over a, a, the tree. But um, you need to be hanging them up and you need to get this part dry, right? So it needs to get dried and the leaves where we've cut. So you need to leave them for about seven days to dry out before you can actually do the, the planting of the cutting, right? But for today... I'm just going to show you how to take one of those cuttings that we just did and we're just going to pretend that it's had seven days of drying and I'm going to put it into a pot. You can pot them if you want to wait until they, um, uh, you know, produce little um, leaf growth or you can put them straight into like what I've done here with the um, infrastructure. I can plant them straight onto the posts here all right so i'm just going to show you i'll show you we'll do one on the pot and then i'll do one on the um pole and i'll just turn you around again so you can see what i'm doing okay oh sorry back again Bit hard when you're a one-man band <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just show you here um, I'll just see if I can do it this way uh, there we go all right so this has got um, some mulch in it um, I do all my own composting and mulch um, so this has got some really nice mulch in it. And then what we do, you have your trusty string ready. This is a, um, a tree, uh, a branch, so we have the string. And I was, before, before we got cut off, I was just showing you that this stake here is actually a tree branch from the tree that we actually grow the vanilla on the gloricidia and you will see that it's starting to uh, grow new um, leaves here so sometimes once they get well established then I'll go and grow the tree as well so that we have new trees growing so when you do when you plant a cutting Remember, you've got to leave these for seven, at least seven to ten days until this area has dried out and the leaves have also dried out. You will see that there's quite a lot of um, wet sap there. And when that touches your skin, it's nasty. So when you do vanilla, you do not bury it. You do not bury it into the ground here, into the soil. Vanilla is laid on top. All right, and you always leave this area out. All right, so you leave it there, and first of all, we're going to tie it. We'll tie it like that, and then we're just going to position it flat along the bottom there. And just put a little bit of the mulch on the part that's on the on the soil and then we're going to cover it up with pulu coconut husk like this I'm just going to put that one underneath notice how I leave that out And that's all there is to it. And that's all there is to it. 
um, and that's how you grow a vanilla plant from a cutting. Take you up closer. Remember, you need to keep the end out. You do not bury it into the soil. And I'll just show you what it looks like laid down. You lay it down like so. Uh, you tie it. And, and then you just cover it with the pulu. I call it pulu, but it's, it's coconut hus, or otherwise known as coil, kua, coil. I, I don't know how to say it. But it, to me, it's coconut hus or pulu. Okay. Here's some that have been growing here for a while. You see these new leaf growth that started there. Um, there's another little leaf growth there. And these supports have actually started growing in trees. So these are good. I mean, I can always gr grow those as well. Here's another one. Yep. And there's another, there's another one there as well. So that's how you grow a vanilla cutting and, and, and pot it, all right? Now you can leave it like that. Um, you can put it in a bigger pot. Why I have them in these is because I always transfer them. So as soon as, excuse me, as soon as they um, start getting new growth like that, I use these for some as uh, new planting material for other farmers. Uh, that's why they're in bags. Otherwise, I bring them and um, we just grow them. We plant them here. So that, like this one. And then we just take them out of the bag and just lay them here, tie them to the pole, and then let them, let them grow. All right? So you can either put them in pots like that or you can um, just put them straight into, into the um, ground like that and grow them on the, on the posts wherever you want, whatever you want to do with them. All right, so I think if there's any questions, pop them in the chat box. Um, yeah, in the comments, if you've got any comments, or once again, if you want to get notified about li um, any of my live broadcasts, tap on that uh, bell icon, show you, let me show you the natural fertilizers that I make. These are all made with um, either plants, or fruit, or eggshells. So I have a, a number of them. Um, this is what I use to spray on my vanilla. So these are all in my bottles and I recycle. It's not vinegar. So this is my lab. So it's lab is short for lactic acid bactillus. Bactillus, I think it is. Um, and this is made with rice water and fermented milk. So it's been fermented with rice milk, um, rice water and milk. And this is the outcome of it. And that's what we call lab. I also make fermented plant juice. And this one was actually made with a banana flower. You know the purple, the purple flower that comes from um, a banana tree when you're growing bananas? Well, we cut that purple flower and we ferment it with sugar and we make this fermented plant juice. And that is an amazing plant food. The vanilla loves this. The other thing that I make is WCA so that's uh, water uh, that, this is calcium and it's uh, water soluble um, calcium and it's made with eggshells and vinegar and this is a really good um, food 
um, for plants as well, as well as um, ant and pest deterrent. So I mix, I mix these things up into um, spray bottles. This is vinegar. This is actually banana vinegar. So what happens is that when we make the fermented plant juice here, you have all of the, the leftover matter of the uh, banana plants and the, the sugar that was fermented. So we strain it and this is what we get. And then we put water into the leftover um, banana flour and the sugar and we leave it there for months and months and months and we create vinegar. And you can actually drink this and use it as real vinegar, but it's also really good for for plants um, and uh, a natural insecticide. One insecticide that I make, this is my ant spray. You may have noticed on some of these vines, um, we have an ant problem. Uh, you might be able to see some ants having a good old time there. And I normally just come out and I make my own ant spray where it's uh, lemons, lemon skins, chilies, and uh, vinegar. And then I let that just sit. And you only need to use very, very little. So like if we were to put some in a bottle like this, a spray bottle, you would only need maybe a tablespoon, if that, into there. And then I spray it. This spray, uh, this is a spray, an ant spray as well, but it's been, it's made with uh, baking soda, vinegar. Um, I also put some of my ant spray in there and it's got uh, detergent liquid and then I fill it up with water. And all we do is spray, spray the ants. And they soon die. And it's had no effect on the vanilla. I've tested it um, and the vine is quite all right. Um, yep. So that's what we do. Um, what I'll do is I'll show you how to mix some of the other natural fertilizer that I use. Down there. Might have to turn you around again so you can see what I'm doing. Let me just get these out of the way. So I'm going to use FPJ, the fermented uh, plant juice. lab and the WCA, the water soluble calcium, which is uh, eggshells and vinegar. So I've just got a spray bottle here of uh, water. If you are going to use, um, ideally use non-fluoride water, uh, use rain water, but if you're going to use water from the tap, then just let it sit for a few hours for all of the chlorine and the fluoride to evaporate and then it's safe enough to use on your plants. And then we get our husky teaspoon. This is the, the tablespoon that I use. Um, it's like a big uh, dessert spoon, but that's what I use. So with lab, you would only need to use, you always put in more of your lab than the rest. So for this size I would use one tablespoon. Whoops. This actually makes a really good household cleaner too. Um, it's a it's a really good um, uh, cleaner and um, uh, sink or oh, gets rid of smells. 
it's got a smell itself because it's made with fermented milk and rice obviously but if you put some in a spray bottle like this and I put um, some essential oils in like lavender or peppermint and and then just spray it on your bench tops oh beautiful it's really really and it helps keep the ants away and then your FPJ put in uh, probably half a half a tablespoon because it's only a small yeah. so you can see how long that would last you you know when you're only spraying it like that or even um, for a five liter sprayer that I put in I only use two tablespoons and if you're going to make big lots like that, then you just need to leave it in the fridge. And then your water soluble, about half a tablespoon as well. So this is your calcium. And this you can use on your new seedlings. Give it a bit of a shake and what we'll do is we'll just spray it on our seedlings here just like that just spray it on the leaves you do so that's a really amazing plant food anyway I don't know if anyone's got any uh, questions that you'd like to ask um, I hope I've shown you you know how, how to you know answered the question anyway and shown you how to grow the vanilla from a cutting that's my method um, there's lots of other vanilla farmers that might show you differently but this is what I've seen that works for me um, and with 14 years experience of growing vanilla here in Samoa um, this is this is how I do it so yeah um, you know it's up to you I mean you can you could google and find out a lot more information but um, like I said I just like to share what what's worked for me and because I am organic, I'm always looking for organic ways of feeding the vanilla and looking after them. Again, it's really important. A lot of people feel that um, in the first 12 months of growing vanilla, that you can prune. You can keep pruning. Now, if you're wanting to get more cuttings, from an existing cutting maybe you're growing one vanilla cutting and you're wanting to grow more my suggestion is to let that one vanilla grow at least for two years without cutting it um, and just feed it look after it so it's really strong and healthy and then your cuttings that you get from that to grow more vines they will be much more healthier if you cut from a vine that is not yet well established and is still growing itself it's still too young then your new cuttings that you're going to use from there will be very weak and more susceptible to root rot and disease so my advice is that if you want to get cuttings um, from an existing vine let it grow for at least two years so that it's nice and healthy and then you can start doing those cuttings um, that you want so that yeah um, but other than that I think that's all for now um, ladies and gentlemen once again thank you so much for being with me it's my hope that I can do this monthly if there's anything that you'd like me specifically to talk about pop it up in the comment box or message me directly remember click that bell icon on your screen if you want to uh, get notifications on my next broadcast but yeah I'm always happy to talk about things that you want to hear
all right um other than that i'll just keep sharing what i do <laughs> all right so from the beautiful island of samoa to to you and to wherever you are in this world with i wish you a beautiful saturday or friday wherever you live and uh wish you a beautiful beautiful weekend yeah god bless thank you again mm. bye for now <laughs>